everybody. Welcome back to Sona Pon 7. It's a pleasure being here with you. I hope that you enjoyed um, the National Children's Parliamentarian Conversation. If you're a parent or a child that's interested in the process, we already shared which are the right avenues for you to find that form. Um, go to the National Commission for Families and Children. And the deadline is August 14th. Get involved in the process. It's going to be a learning and enriching experience for you as a child and also as, as a parent. It's time for our second conversation and joining us with her sunny self. We have Kalina Reynolds. You look absolutely gorgeous in that color. Thank you so much for coming to our couch once more. Always it's always good to talk money conversations yes, that's right. with Let's you. Let's get this money. Let's get, this money. Let's get it, girl. Let's right. get it. So today we're going to be talking about how to win with money given our current inflation rate and, of course, stock exchange conversation. Mm -hmm. um, before we get into that, how are you feeling Today. I'm happy to be home. Yeah. Always a pleasure to be in Belize and happy to be here on Channel 7. Awesome. Good to see you guys. We love, we love, love it. Having yes. you. And more important, I love all the knowledge that you bring to these conversations. You know, we've had several Zoom in person conversations, and I've had so many friends that say, I really took something from that tonight. I ran with it. Awesome. And specifically now, you know, our economy with the inflation, we're egged it again. 50 cents. 50 cents to one egg. But one egg? You never know about... Yes, girl, 50 cents one, to one. One egg? Yes, one about 50 okay. cents to one, not to one. Like, yes, well, wow. one. And even if they had a lean mini ones, that's still 50 cents. That not be uh, 49 or anything like that. So, <laughs> it's, prices are really going up. Yeah. And we know our pain had to go up none at all. And so, a lot of people have been struggling to see how they're going to stretch their money. Even with... I know a lot of teachers and public servants were telling me, even with the 10% getting back into their pockets, like you feel like that does go pan gas or that go pan something, it's, it's, they don't see it. Mm -hmm. And so now we're thinking about how do you spend your money, how do you invest your money? And you look at stock exchange. You want to make your money work for you. You want to be able to sit down and your money is working and you don't have to work extra hard for that. Right. How does a Belizean, a normal Belizean, who have to pay $2 to get four egg? <laughs> work through making their money work for them. So how much for a dozen? Wait, hold on. <laughs> <Six> <laughs> you don't have the calculation. No, right more than that. My gosh, yeah, it is, it is difficult out there. So, you know, I love that you, you've framed it in that way because what I really wanted to talk about today is the possible development of a Belize stock exchange, right? And I'm going to explain how that ties in and everything into people's everyday lives because the last time I was here, we were talking about investments and looking at some other investment opportunities abroad and also yes. some things that you can do locally. And there was a lot of feedback with people asking, well, how can I invest my money from Belize and what opportunities are here? Yeah. And so I started looking into it and seeing, okay, what are the opportunities locally? And there really isn't much, to be honest, in terms of uh, investing in companies. There are a few companies that uh, sell shares publicly in a loose way, meaning that you can go like BL, BTL, uh, BWS, they have shares that these are companies that are owned by the government and from time to time, some, but you, there's no way for you to know yeah. when somebody wants to sell their shares, when shares are available. So like it's really advertised, like, it's, hey, buy my shares. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's, you kind of have to be in that circle uh -huh. and be in the know to have that opportunity uh, presented to you. So what a Belize Stock Exchange would possibly do, and I, I just want to use this opportunity to drop that, uh, to, to, to put that in people's consciousness, right? And I know that there are some moves towards a possible Belize Stock Exchange, and there, you know, regulation has come in place now uh, last year, and there are some people who are working actively towards doing something like this, or at least trying to test the waters. And so I think now is a good time to sensitize people as to what this could look like and what it would mean for Belize. I really think that this could transform the entire economy and also transform ordinary people's lives. So let's start here. What is a stock exchange? A stock exchange is simply a place where you can buy and sell shares. Okay. The other word for it is stock market. So think of it like a regular market where you go buy and you sell things, right? Mm -hmm. So you can buy and you can sell shares in a company. What are shares? Well, this represents your percentage of ownership in a company. If Channel 7 was to list on a stock exchange, they would divide up the ownership of the country into shares. It's just an easier way to keep track of how much of the company you own. Because if you have thousands or millions of shares, it's kind of hard to say, I own uh, 
0.000 something percent yeah. of the company. Like <laughs> it's a lot easier to say I own X number of shares, and that's yeah. why they call it shares, right? So if Channel 7 was to list on the stock exchange, what would that mean, right? It would mean that Channel 7 would have access to capital, to money, without having to borrow it from a bank. Or any business in Belize would have access to capital to raise money without having to pay interest to a bank. Because how would they be raising that? They would be raising it from Belizean people mm -hmm. who would be able to buy shares in Channel 7 or in your company. If you have a company that possibly would be thinking about, you have a project that you want to do. I know Jules has this um, vision for a, a studio, uh -huh. right? Yeah. A, a huge new studio. How would they raise the money for that studio? Your, your options are limited. You can borrow the money. Mm -hmm. You can find private investors who are going to uh, give you the money in exchange for a percentage ownership of the company, which is the same concept as being listed on the stock exchange. The only difference is it's more people. It's kind of like crowdfunding for your business, yeah, yeah. right? You get to go directly to the Belizean people. And then what happens is that you get this money for your business and now you are accountable to the shareholders, which means that if you're going to list, you have to be a very well-governed company. You have to be transparent with your finances. You have to publish those every quarter. You have to have a board of directors. Your governance has to be there because if I'm going to invest in you, I have to trust you right. yes. with my money, right? Exactly. So the benefits to me, it's a win-win-win situation if Belize was to have a stock exchange. What would happen is that individuals who benefit on a personal level, because you get to invest in Belize's best businesses, your best run businesses, because the criteria for listing is that you have good corporate governance. Yeah. So you get to invest in Belize's best businesses. These types of businesses are often quite profitable. So you become entitled to a share of the profits. And then when the share price goes up, you benefit from that. So you win on a personal level. The business wins because they get to raise money for you know, without having to pay interest to a financial institution. And the country wins because these businesses are able to grow and hire more people, and that leads to growth in the economy. And so it's a win-win-win for all. And it's one of the things that I really want to start advocating for. And I know, ideally, this should be led by private sector. And if there's anyone out there who is actively doing this, uh, link me, because I would love to be involved. Definitely. So, what's, so we're talking stock exchange. What's the current landscape for that in Belize? I mean, um, is it viable uh, like as our like, constitution of, or our like, uh, guiding processes allow for, for such a thing to develop in the country? Right. So legislation was passed last year here in Belize to enable, to, to create the enabling environment for it. And that's part of the difficulty that we have had in the past is okay. that there is no enabling environment. But think about this. In the Caribbean, Jamaica has a stock exchange, mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago has a stock exchange, Barbados has a stock exchange, Guyana has a stock exchange. Even the OECS countries collectively have a stock exchange. Oh. So we're the only country yeah, yeah, that's that doesn't have a stock exchange in this region. Because <laughs> the Spanish, I don't know if Cuba has one, Dominican Republic definitely has a stock exchange. I don't know if Haiti has one. And I'm sure the countries in Central America have stock exchanges as well. So we need to get behind this. This is something that can create wealth in so many different ways on so many different levels. And what is the landscape for it, you said? Um, there's so many businesses that need money, right? Got it. So many businesses need capital to invest in their businesses, to build, to grow, to, to do so many different things. And access to capital is one of the biggest issues that businesses currently face. And a stock exchange could be a solution to that because people have money. I mean, I know times are hard, but there are people also who have money and they have nothing to invest it in, other than probably property. You might not have enough to invest in a property, say you want to buy a house or an apartment, rent out apartments or so on. But if you, have, if you don't have a couple hundred thousand dollars to do that, but you have $500 that you can invest in something, where do you put it? Right now, there really is nowhere to put it. Definitely. And, and the good thing also about Belisa, we have a diverse sector. So yeah. there's something that might fit you and, and what you're thinking about. What might be a thing that gravitates me towards investing, right? So we have that going on in the country where I feel people can 
put in their money to make it grow for them. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's currently ongoing in the country is Social Security Board and their look for investing $100 million, <laughs> right? So one of the things exactly. that, that they're planning on doing is, is investing in this pharmaceutical company, mm -hmm. uh, about $7 million. So, no, yeah. yeah. So what, what are your thoughts on, on that kind of process going on there? All right, so I'd, I've heard a little bit about this story. I don't know the details, right? But some of the questions that you have to ask, and it comes back to what I was saying about the governance and the transparency, is it a company that's transparently run? Mm. Who are the directors of this company? What is their accountability process? And I'm sure that these are things that Social Security Board would or should be asking. Well, let me not say I'm sure because police passed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, well the <laughs> pharmaceutical <laughs> companies sell Viagra without prescriptions. I mean, without they, prescription. Without yeah. prescription. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. So it, it makes you question, you know, are, is Social Security investing in And the, I also heard that they but, wanted more than the $7 million. So they kind of like got down to this. It was more. Well, see, that's the exact challenge that a Belize stock exchange would address because Social Security has this money that they need to invest and there's nowhere to invest it. Yeah. If we had a stock exchange on which Belizean companies that are well governed and well run are listed, they would have an immediate vehicle for that money. But you know something, Kalila? What we have to it. also address, a big elephant in the room, is people are afraid when they hear stock exchange. A lot of the average Belizean, I think, gets super afraid when they hear stock exchange because they attribute it to people that are in finance or people that are brokers or like, you know, all these people in that sector as compared to the average Belizean maybe have at least savings some way, put up or so. And so... In that idea, how do you be able to advocate and open their mind to these things? Because people think that this is not the realm for them. They think they, they can't invest their money. They wonder so many questions. Oh, I get it back or mm -hmm. well, what happened? And then I think it always goes back to the transparency of having whoever it's trying to run and get that investment in, showing every single thing of how you're going to be spending that money and what they really do with the money is that they actually get in the, that um, company. Mm -hmm. So I think there's just this big fear and... But Belizeans, they're kind of afraid of change to a certain degree. So when you think about, you know, having a stock exchange market here specifically, I think it would benefit a lot more of people that are in the upper class or some middle that's, class. That's that, a big misperception, you know, because, because when you have a stock exchange, it makes, it, it makes investments and access and ownership accessible. As like I would say, what, like I was saying earlier, what are the things that you can currently invest in? Real estate, so property, that takes a lot of money mm -hmm. to be able to invest in real estate. You can invest in your own business, building a business that takes a lot of time. But when you invest in stocks, you can buy $10 worth of stocks. That's very, very accessible. You can buy $5, Belize dollars, you know, yeah. worth of stocks. That's very, very accessible for the average person. And people think of stock exchange, like you said, as something for the wealthy something for rich people it's not necessarily just for the wealthy it is how you get wealthy it is your path towards wealth creation by investing and you start with something like stocks which is a uh, general ownership or group ownership and then you can move towards and you can use that the money that you make there yeah. to build towards other asset classes like property so that can help you to own your house you know, you make your invest, your small investments here, your $5, your $10, you get your returns. Mm -hmm. And that adds up over time to enough to buy property, enough to invest in your own business or anything else that you want to invest in. Right. I also think that the fear uh, extends beyond, you know, not, not knowing, you know, your money's return. But it's just the fear of unknown when it comes to stock exchange. Right. You know, it's not an average yeah, conversation. Yeah, people all the time, Pambo. Well, I mean... <laughs> that's true, too. You know, yeah. that's a true way of thinking about it. I know, I, I am not sure if it relates to stock exchange in, in that manner, right? But at the same time, it's like, we also think that when we talk about finances and financial news, it's not something that a lot of people would, would gravitate to. And you've been a, a very big advocate when it comes to financial news and mm -hmm. making it accessible Education. and comprehensible to, yep. uh, to people. So why is it important for folks to tune into financial news and get into that, that realm. Right. So in Belize, there's not much financial reporting that goes on because companies in Belize are private. They're privately owned. So I can just go on the internet and find out how much money Channel 7 make last year how much, and how much money they spend because these right. are privately owned companies. But we do do that type of reporting for the government because the government is accountable to the public. Mm -hmm. We should be able to do that type of reporting for publicly owned companies such as the BEL and BTL and so on. 
because uh, these are owned by the government and therefore ultimately accountable to the people of Belize. I don't know if those books are available. But if and when, and I'm going to say when because I want to speak this into being, a Belize Stock Exchange is indeed enveloped, uh, developed, it would be extremely important for the media to look at the company's returns whenever they file them every quarter, uh, their annual returns, their profit and loss statement, to see how companies are doing and to hold the leaders of these companies accountable because now you are publicly owned and this is how people will know to make, you know, what decisions to make. Should I buy this stock? Should I sell this stock? It all comes with the financial news. And you as reporters, or us as the media, need to make this information as easy to understand as possible to remove that fear that is there and that stigma that is there surrounding financial news. It just takes education and effort on our part. But I think it is totally worth it to transform the entire economy. Definitely. Oh, definitely. What I can see... Um, when, because we're saying we're speaking into when, existence, yes. when the Belize Stock Exchange happens here, you know, when we're able to open that market, I, I can clearly see children pushing their parents to invest a lot because children are a little, a little bit more open-minded to get the new information, so to understand, to just like try new things. And so I know that the misconception that is for the upper and the middle class, but generally, you know, I think a child that comes from maybe, you know, from a more or less fortunate home or so forth, they're going to be like, ma, we could be able to invest this thing, this is what happened. They're going to be the one that pushed to get the education. And isn't it a powerful thing to say, I own that company? Mm -hmm. I, I got own shares, shares in Bon. You know, I have uh, companies that I own shares in in Jamaica. And every time I go in, I feel proud. All right, this is my company. I own <laughs> shares in this. And, so, funny? Be like, you and then it also, to me it also incentivizes <laughs> you to patronize those companies, right? That is true. Because once the company does well, you do well as a shareholder. So now I find myself going to those companies more and spending more at those companies because they're my company. I own this. And it makes, like you said, those companies a lot more accountable because you have right. all these people where want to know what it happened with you. You right. have to... Make sure you're transparent. You're, you're and that's going to be the happen. challenge. That, that part is going to be the real challenge in getting companies up to speed because even our government doesn't like to do it that much, right? Yeah. The to, be held, yeah. to be held accountable and to report to the public. And, you know, there is a culture that, you know, this is private and everything is hush-hush. Definitely. And, but there are companies, I'm, I believe that there are companies that are well-run in Belize. I believe that there must be. There Some is. companies I in Belize so that are well run, that have their corporate governance in place, that file their taxes on time, and that would be easy targets for listing on a Belize stock exchange. It sounds like things are getting favorable for a stock exchange market. You mentioned there was change when it comes to, to the legislation, the legislation right. so that's, that's a favorable thing. And I know that you're here are, being a big advocate for it. And I know it. that there are people yeah. actively taking steps towards exactly. this. Yeah. So for the average folk that's that's for the for the Belize that's tuning in right now and say hey, I want to start preparing myself to be an investor in, in stock exchange, what are things that they should be like getting on when it comes to this preparation process? Well, at this point, what you can do is start saving mm -hmm. so that when the opportunity comes up, you have some money to invest, right? right? That's true. Uh -huh. So you can start accumulating some savings, even if it's a, it's a little bit, you know, here and there, whatever. Dollar a day, put up your change, whatever it is, when this opportunity does come. And it's not anything that's going to happen this year, probably not next year, but within some maybe five years, if we can make this happen. And I am part of my reason for this visit is to raise awareness about this, the possibility to open up people's minds to consider the possibility and also to have some, some high-level meetings about what can be done. So I do have some, some meetings happening this week, yeah. uh, hoping, hoping to Ooh. try and make it happen, you know, yeah, see how it can feel. happen because I have a lot of connections where I'm from and I think something can, should and can be done. It should. I mean, five years is sufficient time to make us start raise something Definitely. and for us to kind of open our mind to as well. Because I think in this time of waiting, it's not just saving, it's about educating yourself about right. the different processes, what it entails. And I'm really hoping to for our education system, it, has to, it becomes a conversation that happens there more too. Because if they're not tuning into your, your, your YouTube and talking to you and knowing what, exactly what you're doing, we're not going to be able to... We're getting that information sometimes, yeah. so it's really important. We used that to we have a that. Belize Unit Trust that no longer exists. Um, yeah, the opportunities are just so limited right now, and there's so much room for. Ex every time I come home, I just say opportunities. 
so much room for expansion. And so I just really want to plant that seed yeah. as to what could happen and what it could mean for Belize and for you as an individual. Yeah, you know, and, and I really like the fact that you mentioned that um, by companies sharing, you know, what, what their governance structure is, what are their profits and that kind of thing, it allows for people to, to want to invest. It's an invitation exactly. rather than saying it, I don't want people in my business knowing, you know, like, they should go and mind their business. No, you want people to know what's going on there so they're interested in investing in you, you and also gives you opportunity for growth. You said yeah. significant and kind grow when you have people that are on the, so inside, that outside, that are on the inside, not inside, mm -hmm. indirectly. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. like you said, you go and visit these places, you say, I want to know how the well-being of this business is going. How is the environment? Like, how are we growing? And then for all you know, people could add very good contributions to help you fix that issue. They will, they will recommend people to come. They will support in all kinds of ways. It's, it is a significant way in which a business, a company, anywhere can be able right. to make themselves and, at an advantage. And, and let me point this out as well. So one of the things that Jamaica has done and Trinidad has taken it on as well is they've developed a junior stock exchange. So you have your regular stock exchange and companies list, they raise money, uh, people own shares in them, but the junior stock exchange is for smaller companies. Oh. So you think, all right, a Billy Stock Exchange, I would think probably Bowen and Bowen, Sancast Group, you know, the big companies, of course, BL, BTL, and those would be listed on a main stock right. exchange. A junior market would be for like a Channel 7 and, you know, smaller businesses that have, they don't have that big, big, you know, capital that these big companies have. But what is special about how they did the, stu the junior exchange in Jamaica and Trinidad is that there are tax breaks for companies that list oh. on the junior market. So for the first five years of listing, you pay zero income tax as a company. For the second five years, you pay 50% income tax. And the reason for this is to help these con companies grow. The, the objective is to try to nurture these companies mm -hmm. so that they can use that money that they would have paid in tax to reinvest in the business yeah. and to help them grow. And <clears throat> this incentive has been really beneficial for many, many companies in Jamaica and Trinidad. And we have seen a, just a flock of companies coming to list. And we've immediately seen the benefits of listing for them. We've seen those companies grow because, like I said, the companies now are now accountable to the public. So they have to publish their financial statements every three months. Mm -hmm. So we know for a fact that they're growing and we can see the immediate impact of listing. Wow. We can see what they use the money for, how it has benefited the company. And we also see a rise in popularity of these companies because some of them might have been not as well known. But the publicity from the listing, from doing an IPO, now they become a household name. And so now they get more customers. There's one that listed this year, Fesco Gas Station, which was a, a local company. It was in one rural town and they listed and they used the money to expand to Kingston. They built two oh. new gas stations. And now they are one of the most popular gas stations in Kingston. And we've seen that w their profits have just gone up and up and up and up based on volumes. Mm. Not just because gas price is high right now, but also because people are buying more from that company because of the exposure that it gave them. And also because they're able to build two new gas stations in very highly trafficked areas. Wow. Nice. I mean... It can't get any better than that, right? right. The, 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 the nurturing, I'm thinking the, the good governance structure, the transparency. And you know, like, what is your country getting to when it comes to its economic status? So it's absolutely beautiful. I'm looking for yeah. the opportunities. I'm just hoping and praying. Start you have great needs coming saving, up. Saving, saving, yeah. So it's time. Try, I want, want to help and I try. Yes. I'm really hoping people start to educate. Don't shy away. Younger... The young people, I feel like they need to really educate because you can be able to teach your parents to as well because they're going to be the ones sometimes a little bit more hesitant. But learn, read up, watch the YouTube video. Like yeah. just go and just little nuggets, ask the questions there. Start the conversations among your friends. And not, not shy away, gather enough for weed. That's not our conversation. No, let it be a conversation to have at any age because you never know when that time can come when you have your lease savings or so mm -hmm. you said the right opportunity it's an affordable price like you said five ten dollars you never know what you, you just make that great deal and you can be able to invest yeah. so so kalila i mean moving on so uh, changing the topic a bit you say you're you're in belize you're visiting and it's always good to be home mm -hmm. one of the places that you visited was krem Right, so yes. uh, can you talk? We also have a video of you on, uh, on your visit to Krem. 
Um, can you share with us what was the experience coming back to your roots, you know, and, and from the time you left and going back, you know, how has your experience and, and things changed? It was so weird because I haven't been to Crem in like 10 years. Oh, and wow. they really put me because they're like, we're going to Channel 7 and I'm going to see I can see that, yeah. So it was very nice to be back, though, because it brought back a whole lot of memories. That was my first full-time job because I started, you know, my first job in media was actually at More FM when More FM had just, 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 just start. All right. And I stayed there a grand total of three weeks before I was recruited by Krem. Um, somebody heard me from Krem, heard me on, call, on More FM and called me. And it's like, you want to come work at Krem? I was like, yes. Because at that time, like I said, More FM was brand, brand, brand new. Okay. So like, it wasn't even <laughs> a real station yet. It was just uh -huh. like in Belmopan. And, and Krem was like this, the, the biggest of the big at the yeah. time in the early 2000s and late 90s, you know. And I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> and I started there when I was in Sixth Farm, started a show called Youth Explosion on Friday nights. That, that's the only time slot they had available who to listen to um, talk show per Friday night. <laughs> but that's oh, what, what I was Youth doing. Explosion. <laughs> that's what I was doing. Then I went off to college and came back. And then I started working at Creme full time, doing the morning show and working in the news department as a news editor. So it was, it was really nice to be back. Wow. And I'm sure they were happy to have you as well. Yeah. Like the, they definitely told you, how you been to Channel 7 and uh, back to Krem? I right? know, right? Anything so, changed. But every time I talk, because I keep in touch with Jules regularly, so I usually let him know when I'm coming. And every time I say I'd come, he's like, oh, you have to come pass on over every time. That's true. You and then message true. me like immediately. So it's, you can't, I can't say no to Jules, right? Awesome. <laughs> Jules, I go off. But, <laughs> but is there any, any changes you say from, you know, when you came to now, like anything you love? being, you know, back in behind the zinc fence. <laughs> yeah, well, well they, they've grown. I can see the infrastructure. They have new buildings in the yard um, in terms of Belize in general. And I'm back all the time. Like, I come back at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, because I was here in November last time. And, you know, every time I come, I just look at what's changed. So, like, yesterday, I'm going to pass by Princess Margaret Drive. I'm like, last night, I was like, that, 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 that John's? See, uh, SJC? Like, yeah, that's SJC, because the new fence. I'm like, oh, so I'm, I always look out for the development to see the new buildings go. A couple of years ago, I came back, I said, Mirab, have big, big, big store. Benny's have big store. And, you know, I always look to see what's changed. And it's really fun to see uh, your country developing before your eyes. Yeah, and you're part of that change, too. So we definitely see what's going to be next stock exchange market. Definitely. It's about time. So as we're wrapping up, there is one question that's probing about, you know, investigative journalism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that's happening in Jamaica. Like, what do you see as the importance of investigative journalism and applying it now to Belize? <laughs> investigative journalism is extremely important. <clears throat> um, journalists, is our, it is our job to probe, right? So we are what they call the fourth estate. And so we are the accountability for government, for companies, for both public and private sector. Like I said, when you do financial reporting, you report on private sector as well. And so it's extremely important to get to the bottom of things. It can be hard and time consuming. And I know it's a challenge for newsrooms here because of resource constraints. You only have three, four, five people in a newsroom. I remember at one point, I was the newsroom. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> For a few months, that was just wow. me. Have to write and read the news. Girl, you it happens. Up a miracle. Wow. So we can definitely see growth. It happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I know the resource constraints when you only have a couple reporters and a couple cameramen to send on the road, and then you want to do this big investigative piece too. It's it's really challenging, and people are always criticize the media. Want to do more investigative journalism? The resources just aren't there. But if it's really important, you just have to try carve out some time. It might take you months to finish a story. And that happens in developed countries. Reporters take months to finish a story. Usually, they have the luxury of doing it alone and being assigned just that one story. And they can take off time from the general luxury, duties yeah. of the newsroom <laughs> to do the one story. Um, but we have to carve out the time and try. We might have to take... It will take us longer. Yeah. But... Um, it can be done, and it has been done. I've seen investigative reports out of Belize. It's not as common because of the constraints that we mentioned, but we need to find the time to do it. Has it really helped Jamaica? Of course. It helps any, any country. 
The accountability goes yeah. right back full circle to what we've been talking about from the beginning, accountability. It gives people trust in the government, trust in the private sector, and that is extremely important for a well-run country. Definitely. Well, thank you so much as always. I know you was pressure you as always to make sure you come up and show yourself that's so it's, it's honestly not take much pressure. No. <laughs> they were just like, can you go and set up myself? Sure, because there's pretty always much, something that's it. to talk but thank about. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for always it's being always open to the invitation. Language. And I wanted to talk about this topic, so we're it was really easy. I'm excited yeah. because, I mean, like you've mentioned, this opens new horizons for our country. And I'm really hoping that our Belizeans, please, not only start safe, but start learning too as well. Just little snippets of information, please. I know some people don't like read. Go find YouTube. One more thing I want to mention, because um, there are opportunities to invest abroad, right? They have the New York Stock Exchange, so many different stock exchanges. But our challenge here is getting the currency, mm. getting yeah. U.S. dollars to, to know to send to, to these places to basically be exporting US dollars. I yeah. barely so have US have dollars. A credit card, I'm not credit card, not a bank account over. Yeah, in yeah, that that's makes hard it easier. to also. Open so there's up. a big challenge with accessing US dollars to be able to make investments in the United States or in Jamaica or elsewhere in the Caribbean. And so a solution to that is also the development of a local stock exchange that you can invest yes. Belize dollars into Belizean companies. There we go. I'm looking forward to blessings on your meetings this week. and. I hope you enjoy your stay at Belize as always because this is a home, so you know we're going to enjoy it. We thank you again for this conversation. And with that, guys, we go to our next commercial break. And when we're back, we're going to be having a very interesting conversation and wrapping up the show. Stay tuned.